Okay. So that's the plan is a dynamic course. You probably never had a course that keeps changing in syllabus, but that's going to be what you're going to find probably very useful. And so today we did this introduction and I'm going to talk about some slides which I call predicting technology. And I'm going to talk about some slides of this Canadian professors, University of Toronto. Uh, he called it predictive machines. And he talks about the a way an economist see artificial intelligence. I think you're going to find it interesting, and I think it has a lot of meaning uh, in this current environment that we are. Next class, we are going to spend the entire four hours talking about a pandemic. Um, and I'm going to ask a couple of you to do little presentations. I'm going to, uh, in a little while, I'm going to explain to you what the issues are. And uh, the, I have taught this course recently in Singapore, but was distant. So I was here, they were in Singapore. And I was very worried about uh, attention span after a couple of hours of class. The classes in our executive program in Singapore are eight hours. And so I, I just didn't think anyone could last on a terminal for eight hours. So I did like two hour classes and cut them. And then I started expanding them, I finished up with four hour classes, and I did cover the 36 hours of the course. But I learned a few things about, about uh, teaching a distance. And uh, the main important thing is not to kind of lecture for too long. And so, and I have done these issues uh, now for 10, 15 years. So it really didn't change very much what we are going to do. And so you basically are going to have two types of assignments. One we call issues. And issues is basically either by yourself or with one partner, you you discuss one of the issues that listed on the syllabus, but you are allowed to change the issue if you want to. It's flexible. And then the second thing at the last day of classes, you are, or the day before the last day of classes, you are going to present uh, maybe with a partner, can be person groups of one or two, you are going to present a particular technological topic. And although I'm going to give you a list of topics that you can choose, you can also go outside the list and suggest something. And this has been um, also done pretty much in every time I taught this for the last 20 years. Um, but after it, in the pandemic, our discussion is going to be mainly focused on thinking about accountants and auditors' contribution to dealing with the pandemic. Because uh, the one thing about the pandemic is that the numbers in the pandemic are really ridiculously wrong. I mean, they are dimensionally wrong. Uh, the numbers of how many people have died in the United States are maybe half or one third of what they should be. The number of people that have contracted the disease are dimensionally wrong. Uh, and uh, we're going to discuss about that and say, how can we apply uh, our science, a science of estimating the values of populations, which is uh, accounting uh, and auditing, measuring and accounting. How can we apply this to the problems of the pandemic? Uh, what kind of models we could use? And it's really to think about how we can deal about this. And I'm going to uh, send you a uh, set of questions about the pandemic and would like a couple of you to present an issue and we are going to either if you no one volunteers i'm going to choose a couple of you to present to present the issue um, and then after the pandemic we're going to kind of go back to normal life and we're going to talk about big data and robotic process automation and i typically talk about about what they call I call exogenous variables, external variables. And what I say to the audit profession, my colleagues and my partners and, and the people that I work with, uh, is there be a day that the audit will not require looking at the client's data, that most of the things will be estimatable from third-party data. 
and things like IoT devices, pictures from satellites, pictures from drones, examination of social media, examination of weather patterns, uh, uh, prediction analytics are going to progressively replace the kind of dreary going to the client, picking up data, and et cetera. And uh, I think the audit also is going to have um, kind of different dimensions of precision. There'll be a very precise audit, there'll be the less precise audit. As you haven't taken auditing, I'm not going to at this moment draw on this, but that's uh, basically the idea um, around this discussion. Then Abby is going to talk about robotic process automation, and she's going to give you a little lab. Is that correct, Abby? Yes, yes. So actually, I want to do a little poll. So uh, if you are using Mac, please raise your hand virtually using the raise hand function. If you are using Mac, MacBook. So all of you are using Windows system. That's a great news uh, because when we use RPA, uh, the software we need only runs on Windows system. So it's great that uh, most of you are using Windows. OK, I'm great. Sorry, I'm actually using Mac. Sorry. Oh, OK, Jennifer, uh, I can um, I can help you with that. Uh, uh, who else? Right, I'm using Mac as well, too. OK, so we may as well. OK, so if you are using Mac, uh, there is uh, one way like you can run a uh, virtual machine on your computer, but uh, I will I will let you guys know how it's working. Um, okay, the hand function is not working. All right. Uh, so we will I will figure that out and I will let you guys know. Uh, but I will illustrate step by step of how you use that software, and I'm, maybe I will give you some assignments. Um, but for the Mac users. Um, if you cannot use that, uh, you are not uh, you are not required to do the uh, that practice. Um, so we will talk about that uh, when we um, when we do that uh, when we reach our third class. Good, um, and then we are going to have a whole session on um, on AI, and basically just to give you a feeling what AI is and what kind of things AI can do. And of course, imagining or identifying things that it can help the accounting and auditing profession. Actually, at this moment, uh, there is a couple of softwares that are replaced in the traditional audit software that claim to be AI-ish. And we are going to talk about that. And then we have basically two sessions on data analytics, which will give you a little introduction of what can be done with data analytics and a little introduction of how to start in this world of data analytics. Um, and then we will have a lecture on this area of cryptocurrencies, blockchain, smart contracts, and we are going to talk about a thing that I call GEM, Go Government Economic Monitoring. And uh, GEM is actually using big data to identify narrow social pathologies. So for example, using big data to identify wife abuse, children abuse, or neglect, uh, opioid addiction, and et cetera. And this is just a set of ideas that we have been developing. And uh, I wish uh, these things were already somewhat effective because, or working, because at this moment with the pandemic, they would have been very, very useful for identifying uh, pandemic issues. For example, uh, there is a company that sells electronic thermometers, and they are connected on the internet. And these uh, th thermometers, they can draw a map of the United States, about a million of them out there, and see if in average, in a particular location, uh, the population's temperatures are going up or down. And that's a reasonable proxy for there is a flu epidemic or there is a 
COVID uh, uh, epidemic going on in this particular geolocation. Uh, and this is like a gem type of, of thinking. And if you link, uh, for example, drug purchases, uh, like people buying a lot of uh, Dayquil and Iquil, at the same time, temperatures, and the same time, utterances in social media, putting them all together, you can pretty much draw a map of the United States of where the pandemic or where a flu epidemic is expanding and where things are getting better. Now, if we had Jam working already, maybe we would have been able to, to help on this, on this domain. Um, and, uh, you know, it's very interesting when we talk about Jam, we're going to talk about uh, this whole issue of privacy and of public usage of private data. And of course, when I talk to you guys, you're going to immediately say things like, oh, my data is private and I don't like to give my data to anyone. But you know, if you compare people of my generation with people with your generation, uh, actually you guys care much less about privacy than my generation does. Because you are used to sell part of your privacy in order to get a service like Google, for example. And this is a real discussion. And what I usually tell my students is the following. Forget about privacy. Privacy is gone. But don't worry too much because no, you are not very interesting. So no one is going to be digging too much unless you make yourself interesting. And I have examples of that. But uh, if you observe what has been happening with the pandemic, actually the Israelis uh, have admitted that they are doing geolocational monitoring. And basically they say is to prevent terrorism by Palestinians. And so, and we started noticing that certain, several countries are doing geolocational monitoring, and which is a big invasion of privacy in one sense, but it probably can be controlled uh, by good legislation. Uh, and many countries, secret services or, uh, or, or, or other government, non-declared government uh, activities are already doing this. The, the Chinese are doing this face recognition stuff, which is uh, very revealing. Uh, even in the US, the telephone companies are keeping geolocational information of when you use your cell phone. Uh, is a is a technology called G. Uh, so uh, this is actually the future, and we need to think about it in a little bit different way and try to get the good things out of GEM, not the bad things. And we'll talk about that. Uh, and then we are going to talk about three uh, related things. One, robots. Second, drones. And the third one, this thing that is called Internet of Things. An Internet of Things is basically when devices communicate among themselves or with you. And so, for example, your car talks with your home, uh, talks with the heating of your home, uh, and talks with the car going by next to you for some functionality. Uh, for example, for self-driving cars to identify uh, cars coming in the other direction or something like that. And now uh, this IoT is anything from a camera connected to the internet to a refrigerator, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, there are predictions that there'll be a trillion devices of IoT connected on internet in 10 years. And which is pretty scary. At the same time, is a very different scenario of life. At the same time, is very much is very much um, a set of functionalities, maybe as uh, dominating of the culture and of our lives as things like electricity or, or the plow uh, have been in our lives. So it's uh, something that you have to get used to change because change is coming. And in our profession, we're going to have to use it and use it well for good social good. And then I'm going to talk about um, 
this technology that I have been working maybe for 30 years now of changing basically how auditing is is being done is not like uh, once a year come and examine the books, but there's a continuous flow of monitoring uh, companies' economic activity and calling exceptions uh, when some anomaly happens or something that you want to notice. And finally, uh, in the last class, we are going to talk about cybersecurity, NSA, privacy, and etc. Very important thing for auditors. I don't know if you're aware, but uh, the AICPA has issued guidance on reviewing cybersecurity. Uh, basically, because cybersecurity could be a, a disruptor of um, of company integrity, uh, and so they are creating the services. Actually, the AICPA is creating a whole set of other assurance services, kind of audit services, which we call SOX. Um, and they are assurances on supply chain, on cybersecurity, and et cetera. And when you guys go into the profession, progressively, uh, your jobs are going to gear towards not only the traditional audit, but these other functionalities that we are going to be selling as a profession. Um, uh, Amy Paulicki, who is one of the senior persons at uh, the ICPA, uh, basically showed a slide in our Assurance Service Executive Committee meetings, I mean that AICPA committee. And the slide basically said that out of the standards and pool 500 companies, uh, about 85% of them already disclose non-financial statement data, things like sustainability reporting, echo reporting, whatever, integrated reporting, etc. And 35% of them are now buying assurance services for those services. So, you know, move forward 10 years, unless we have a major catastrophe, uh, most of the job of auditors are going to be in that direction. Uh, a very expanded set of services uh, that we need to to think about uh, sincerely. Um, and then what we are going to do is you are going to present your projects, or I think it's the 3rd of August. And again, as I said, you can partner up with one person for your project. Uh, and, and we'll have a final exam. The final exam is going to be from home, and by the way, say, oh, this is because of the pandemic. No, I have been giving my final exam from home for 10 years or something like that. It will be open book, open notes, and it's really designed to uh, for you to learn something. And depending on what we manage to cover in the semester, the content of the exam will be something that we didn't cover in the semester that I want you to learn. Uh, it's, a, it's an exercise of self-instruction self and, and self-interpretation and of things on the internet and et cetera, et cetera. So that's the nature of our final exam. Obviously, the thinking and the basic knowledge from this class will be applicable. Uh, the exam, the only limitation I have at this moment is the exam is individual, is not a cooperative exam. And if you extract things from the internet, you cite, the, just to get, develop the good habits of uh, knowing when you got things from. And so I, I actually here put a whole set of topics that you could use for potential projects. Uh, for your final project, and I am going to actually send you a list of some ideas, but I am very happy if you have an idea that's not on the on this. You know, it's like uh, uh, things like uh, 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 things like uh, exogenous variables, 3D printing, etc. Very interesting topics 